Today's lesson is titled Geometric Probability. We're going to start right off with an example problem or a you try, whichever way you want to do it. If you want to try, go ahead and try it, and when you're ready to check your answer, uh, press play after you pause the video while you're trying it. A desk is 29 inches wide and 60 inches long. On the desk, there's a pad. It's one of those little desk pads. It could be, it could be um, just a pad for writing, or it could be a pad that maybe has your calendar on it. It's 17 inches wide and 22 inches long. If a person randomly flips a paper clip onto the desk, what's the probability that we'll land on the desk pad? Any ideas or any maybe things you might do to help you get started to form an idea? Yeah. Find the area of the, of the desk, okay. Okay, 29 times 60 is going to give us the area of the desk. What else do we need? Find the area of the pad. I don't know if I would subtract. We're probably going to want to divide somewhere to do the probability part of it. I would probably start with a picture. And the picture's not even close to scale. But I have an idea of where I have basically all I've done with the picture is put numbers on the rectangle so I know what's why. But like you said, we need to find the area of the desk, so that's just the 29 times 60. We also need the area of the pad, which is the 17 times 22. So the area of the pad is going to be 374 square inches. The area of the desk is going to be 1,740 square inches. And then we need to go ahead and find the probability that that paper clip is going to land on the pad. So once we've got those two numbers, how do we find the probability that it lands on the pad? Other way around. Uh huh. Yeah, because probability is always um, what we want to happen divided by what could happen, right? We want it to land in the 374 square inches. It could land anywhere in the 1,740 square inches. So probability is always what we want to happen divided by what could happen. So like, if you take that back to a dice, that's the classic probability. How do you find the probability of rolling a two? It's one dice, yeah. Yeah, there's, there's one thing we want to happen and there's six things that could happen, right? One out of six, it's the same concept. So we got about 0.21, which we could probably say, what, 21%? That's a classic geometric probability type problem. All it is is a probability problem that involves area. Here's one for you to try. The cable guy is going to arrive at your house between 1 and 3. What's the probability that you'll miss the cable guy if you get home at 1.20? If you're working at home, uh, pause the video when you're ready to check your answer with ours. Press play. Let's see what we can come up with here. We just said um, that probability is what we want to happen divided by what could happen, right? So in this problem, what we want to happen is kind of weird, worded weird because we don't really want to miss the we don't really want to miss the cable guy, but that's for the way the question is worded. So if we miss the cable guy, how many minutes of time could the cable guy come within in order for us to miss him? 20 minutes. And how many minutes of time is the cable guy scheduled to come in? we got two hours is 120 minutes. So if we just reduce this out, we can knock out the zeros. That's dividing by 10. And then we can reduce the two twelfths. We're down to one sixth. One sixth is approximately what percentage? About seven. So the probability that we're going to miss the cable guy if we get home late is seventeen percent. <coughs> Questions?
Nope. That 17% is is approximately one sixth. I, it makes sense to give this as a percentage, I think. In the book, they went to the nearest tenth. Did it tell us to do that in the directions? No. But they chose to. 2.2%, 6.5%, 10.9% matches up with what we did also. We just didn't go to the same units. In fact, we didn't go to the same units in our three answers. Any questions there? That problem is a little more complex because we to find the area of the stuff we're interested in, we have to consider that subtraction thing going on to subtract out the part of the color that we don't want. Here's one for you to try. We're going to change the blue circle as indicated. How does the probability of hitting the blue circle change if we double the radius of the blue circle? So the blue circle had a radius of 1, right? So if we double the radius of the blue circle, what's going to happen to the probability of hitting it? It's going to double. Let's, let's check that. The, rate, the probability was 2.2 if we go to the tenth, right? 2.2%. Well, if we double the, oops, don't want to go ahead. If we double the radius there, we would have a radius of 2. The area of the blue circle with a radius of 2 would be 4 pi, right? If we take 4 pi and divide by 144, what do we get? Approximately. 8.7. Okay, it was 2.2. And now it's 8.7. So it hasn't doubled. It's actually quadrupled, yeah. And because we took that radius of 2 and we just didn't end up with 2 pi when we got done to divide with, we ended up with 4 pi. We had to square it, right? So that's why you're going to see that quadrupling effect versus, a, a, versus just a doubling. What if we triple the radius? What's going to happen to the area? When we doubled the radius, the, er the probability got about four times greater. If we triple the radius, what's the probability going to do? Is it going to get three times greater, or is it going to be something bigger? You think nine times greater? Because we're going to square that radius, right? Yeah, that's exactly what's going to happen. It's going to be nine times greater. About nine times greater, because we're tripling the radius. But when we square that, that turns that factor to a nine, not just a three. So there's interesting things that happen with area when you change radiuses of circles. Or even lengths of sides. If you double lengths of sides of the square, or triple lengths of sides of the rectangle. That's what we need to learn today.